When modern humans reached Southeast Asia, they did not arrive alone on an empty stage. Long before them, a population of archaic humans had spread from the colder expanses of northern Asia into a southern landscape of tropical forest, river valleys and limestone caves. These people were not purely Denisovan, nor were they Neanderthal. They were descendants of both, carrying the biological marks of a distant hybridization event that had occurred thousands of miles to the north. Their legacy survives today, carried in the DNA of Papuans and other peoples of Oceania. The genetic signature they left is complex enough to have puzzled researchers for nearly a decade. Only now, with detailed genomic comparisons and new fossil finds, has a clearer theory begun to emerge. The new interpretation suggests that a deeply hybridized Denisovan population migrated south from northern China or the Denisova region roughly 150,000 years ago, long before modern humans entered the scene. These hybrids spread into what is now mainland Southeast Asia and the broader region once called Sundaland. There they flourished for tens of thousands of years, eventually encountering the first modern humans to reach the region during the late Pleistocene. In this account, Papuans did not inherit Neanderthal ancestry directly from Neanderthals. Instead, they inherited it indirectly from these southern Denisovan hybrids. It is a theory that intertwines population genetics, climate history, and fragmentary fossil evidence, including an extraordinary tooth found in a Laotian cave. Together, these clues reveal a lost era of hybrid populations moving across Asia long before Homo sapiens expanded across the world. This hybrid group is represented by D2 introgression, shown as pink, on the chart from the study, which occurred 46,000 years ago, somewhere in South Asia or Sunderland. A Denisovan population with 10 to 30 percent Neanderthal ancestry is the most parsimonious explanation for the genetic patterns seen in Papuans today. Papuan specific Neanderthal like haplotypes are more similar to Denisovans than to Neanderthals. The genes look Denisovanized meaning the Neanderthal genetic material evolved within Denisovan populations for some time before entering modern humans. This supports ancient admixture between Denisovans and Neanderthals, likely around 150,000 years ago. The genetic evidence underlying this account comes from detailed studies of the genomes of present-day Papuan groups. Papuans carry a relatively high proportion of Denisovan ancestry, far greater than that found in mainland Asians or Europeans. This Denisovan signal is not uniform. It contains at least two highly divergent branches. One branch is shared more broadly across East Asia. The other is found almost exclusively in populations of New Guinea and Oceania and is deeply distinct, suggesting that Denisovans themselves were not a single unified group, but rather a network of populations separated by time and geography. Even more intriguing is the nature of Papuan DNA that at first looks like Neanderthal genetic material. In most non-African peoples, Neanderthal genes can be traced to a small number of encounters that took place soon after modern humans left Africa. Yet some Neanderthal-like genetic fragments in Papuans are very different. They do not match the Neanderthal sequences found in Europeans or East Asians. Instead, they appear more similar to sequences identified in the Denisovan genome. The implication is striking. These fragments are Neanderthal in origin, but they did not come directly to Papuans from Neanderthals. Rather, they were carried into the south by Denisovans, who had already absorbed Neanderthal ancestry much earlier. This conclusion is reinforced by the shape and length of the genetic fragments. If interbreeding between Neanderthals and the ancestors of Papuans had occurred directly and relatively late, the Neanderthal segments in Papuans would be long and still closely resemble Neanderthal genomes. Instead, they are short and heavily recombined, which happens only when many generations have passed. Furthermore, these segments have drifted toward a Denisovan genetic profile rather than remaining distinctively Neanderthal. The most parsimonious explanation is that Neanderthals and Denisovans interbred long before Denisovans ever reached Southeast Asia. This means that the archaic population that had mixed with the ancestors of modern Papuans was already hybrid. A portion of its genome had originated within Neanderthals. But by the time this population encountered modern humans, that inheritance had been diluted and reshaped inside a predominantly Denisovan lineage. 
Modern Papuans inherited Neanderthal genes only through this archaic intermediate. The genetic signals indicate that the Denisovan Neanderthal hybridization occurred long before the arrival of modern humans in Southeast Asia. The best estimates suggest that the hybridization took place more than 100,000 years before modern humans entered the region. Such a time frame implies an ancient event in Northern Asia, likely anywhere from 100,000 to 200,000 years ago. After this ancient encounter, one branch of the hybrid population moved south. This southward movement aligns with both climatic history and the fragmentary but growing fossil record. Roughly 150,000 years ago, the world was emerging from a long glacial period. In northern Asia, conditions were cold and dry, and regions that had once supported diverse flora and fauna began to contract. Meanwhile, Southeast Asia and southern China remained warmer and more stable. Tropical and subtropical environments offered richer ecosystems with abundant water sources, forests, and caves. In this changing world, a southward migration from northern China or the Denisova region would have been not only possible, but advantageous. The transitional period between the end of the Great Glacial Cycle and the beginning of the last major interglacial created a corridor that allowed hybrid Denisovan populations to expand into new territory. Their arrival in Southeast Asia occurred long before Homo sapiens entered the region. There, the hybrids established themselves across what is now Laos, Vietnam, Thailand, and the broader region of Sundaland, which at that time joined the Asian mainland to Sumatra, Borneo, and Java. This region, rich in caves and dense forests, would have provided the ideal refuge for a population adapted to a range of climates. One of the most evocative pieces of evidence for this migration is a single tooth. Found in the Tam Ngu Hao cave system in northern Laos, the molar dates to somewhere between 160,000 and 130,000 years ago. By age alone, the tooth predates the arrival of modern humans in the region, placing it firmly in the time frame of the presumed Denisovan expansion. The tooth's enamel proteome confirms that it belonged to a member of the genus Homo, and its internal anatomy, captured through micro-CT imaging, matches most closely the morphological pattern associated with Denisovans. Its shape and structure suggest an archaic Homo population descended from the same lineage that produced the Denisovan jawbone discovered on the Tibetan plateau. Yet in some dimensions, the tooth approaches characteristics known from Neanderthals. It is not a Neanderthal tooth, nor is it fully identical to the Denisovan specimens from the Siberian cave of that name, but it shows several structural hints of an ancestry that had blended with Neanderthals earlier. Because no genetic material has been recovered from the Laos tooth, its heritage must be inferred from its morphology and proteome. These do not allow an explicit label of hybrid, but they do suggest that this was a population with complex ancestry. It had Denisovan-type dental architecture, yet it was distinct from both Neanderthals and the first anatomically modern humans who would later occupy the region. The tooth stands as physical evidence of a southern Denisovan lineage that had begun to differentiate long before modern humans arrived. The Laos specimen is not alone. Across China, particularly in the central and eastern regions, several middle Pleistocene fossils display a mixture of traits associated with both Neanderthals and Denisovans. These remains do not fit neatly into known categories. Some have robust jaws and large molars reminiscent of Denisovans, while others show facial or cranial features that are closer to Neanderthals. In several cases, the combination of anatomical traits suggests populations that had formed after hybridization events, only to continue evolving in separate geographic enclaves. The most prominent of these examples is the Xuchang skull from central China. The skull is massive and lacks certain modern human features, but it also has traits that are not fully consistent with Neanderthals. Its age, somewhere between 100 and 130,000 years, makes it roughly contemporary with the Laotian tooth. Although thousands of kilometers separate the two sites, they hint at a wider distribution of archaic populations with interconnected histories. Other remains from China's middle Pleistocene deposits, though lacking molecular identification, carry signatures of hybrid ancestry. 
These include specimens with a combination of primitive and Neanderthal-like traits, sometimes interpreted as regional adaptations, but increasingly recognized as signs of long-term gene flow among archaic hominins. The portrait emerging from this material is not of isolated groups, but of a web of populations exchanging genes over extended periods. When modern humans finally moved into Southeast Asia, perhaps 50,000 years ago, these hybrid Denisovan populations were already present. The ecological mosaic of the region brought the groups into contact. The newcomers carried their own small share of Neanderthal genes, inherited from earlier contact in Western Eurasia, but their most consequential interaction here was with the southern Denisovans. The genetic legacy of that encounter persists most clearly in Papuans, who today live in New Guinea and surrounding islands. They inherited a substantial fraction of Denisovan ancestry and a smaller fraction of Neanderthal ancestry that appears to have come through the Denisovan side rather than directly. Their genomes contain at least two distinct types of Denisovan genetic markers, one shared more broadly with East Asia and another unique to their region. These patterns suggest that Papuan ancestors encountered more than one archaic group during their migration southwards towards Sahul, the prehistoric landmass that once connected New Guinea to Australia. Modern Papuans therefore stand as living descendants of a lost Pleistocene world. Their genetic heritage preserves signatures from ancient hybrid populations that roamed Asia long before modern humans dispersed. They inherited not only uniquely divergent Denisovan sequences, but also Neanderthal-derived segments that arrived indirectly, filtered through the genomes of Denisovan groups that had already absorbed Neanderthal genes hundreds of generations earlier. The story that emerges from genetics and paleontology is more complex than earlier accounts of human evolution. It reveals a Eurasia where different archaic populations overlapped and interbred multiple times. These unions were not brief or trivial. They produced hybrid lineages that endured across millennia and ranged over enormous distances, from the Altai Mountains to the tropical forests of Laos. The movement of these peoples was influenced by climate. As the great ice sheets advanced and retreated, corridors opened and closed. When conditions to the north became harsh, Hybrid Denisovan Neanderthal groups moved south, settling in the refuges of southern China and Southeast Asia. There, supported by stable environments, they persisted long enough to encounter the first episodes of modern human expansion. The discovery of these ancient migrations underscores the fact that modern humans did not enter a world waiting passively for them. They arrived in a landscape already inhabited by others. The story of human origins in Asia is therefore not a simple narrative of replacement. It is a story of encounter, negotiation and exchange, carried out not in language and shared culture, but in the blending of genes. Although we now know that Denisovans range far beyond their Siberian type site, many mysteries remain. What did these hybrid southern populations look like? How did they live? Why did they ultimately disappear? Without more fossils, these questions will remain unanswered. Yet the teeth, jaws and fragments discovered across Asia are enough to show that they were widespread and resilient. Their DNA, preserved in the genomes of Papuans, is the most enduring testimony to their presence. The genetic inheritance of Papuans does not simply tell us that their ancestors met Denisovans. It tells us that they encountered archaic groups whose own past was already tangled. These ancient people were the products of a deeper story, one in which Neanderthals and Denisovans had mixed long before. There was a time, perhaps 150,000 years ago, when the future ancestors of Papuans and Oceanians were not yet conceived, but the archaic forebears who would one day shape their heritage were already on the move, carrying in their cells the memory of two long-lost lineages. In the end, the most compelling evidence of this ancient hybrid world is not found in a tooth or a bone, but in the blood of living people. Papuans carry within them the final echo of an encounter that took place far from the islands they call home. They stand as a living link to a deep past when the history of humankind was written not by modern humans alone, but by all the people who came before them. Click on these videos if you want to go down the rabbit hole of human evolution and thank you for watching.